Athletic performance on the keto diet. I'm gonna be playing devil's advocate here. Why? Because I wanna give you an unbiased look at things. I'm not here to just preach that the keto diet is great or preach that one way is better than the other. I wanna look at the data, I wanna help you make an educated decision yourself. So I'm playing devil's advocate and looking at studies that might lean away from the keto diet versus studies that lean towards the keto diet, I think we get a good solid answer. So many people are coming out and saying that on the keto diet, you lose athletic performance, that you just don't perform as well, your anaerobic peak performance goes down, and that it's not the way you should live. Well, let's take a good deep dive in this, and let's figure it out at the end of the video. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We got new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday here on the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel for not just the ketogenic diet and fasting, but for all walks of life when it comes down to nutrition. Also, make sure you check out highly.com so you can make sure that you get the premium performance apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with a study that is actually against the grain of what we're talking about with keto. I actually want to lead off with a study that says that keto is not good for performance. So this study was published in the Journal of Sports Medicine and Physical Fitness. Okay, and it took a look at 16 men and women. And here's what it had them do. These 16 men and women, it broke them up into either four days of low carb or four days of high carb. First off, let me break that down. Four days of keto and four days of high carb. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. So then what it had them do is it had them do something known as the Wingate anaerobic test and the yo-yo intermittent recovery test. Okay, so these are two studies that typically measure anaerobic activity. So it had both groups consuming the same amount of calories. So the same amount of energy, just some of them were on a keto style, some of them were on a high carb. Okay, so what they found after these performance tests was that the keto group ended up having a 7% decrease in peak power and ended up having 6% less overall mean power. Okay, so I hear you, that's a very interesting study, but there's one glaring problem that I have to break down here. Four days, four days on a keto diet. As those of you that know keto know that at day four, you're not even in full ketosis yet. In fact, you're probably in the heart of the keto flu. You're not feeling your best. You're definitely not fat adapted and you're definitely not utilizing fats yet. So in my opinion, this study is completely null and void because these people were just on a low carb diet. They're in that ambiguous gray area between their body being able to use carbs and use fat. In fact, their body was probably trying to use carbs, but there was nothing left because they were right in that gray area where they were about to get into ketosis. So in my opinion, not really fair. They were using urine test strips to see that they were indeed in ketosis, but that's not the end all be all if you've seen my other videos. So let's go ahead and let's lead into another study that talks about muscle building and how the body preserves muscle on a ketogenic diet, because I think they all kind of work together. So this study was published in the International Society of Sports Nutrition, okay, and it took a look at a high carb group versus a low carb group, both of which were resistance trained men. Okay? So they had them go for 11 weeks on either high carb or low carb, and they measured their overall muscle mass and fat loss at the end of these 11 weeks. Well, they found that the keto group had a 2.1 kilogram greater increase in muscle mass than the high carb group. Not a 2.1 kilogram increase, a 2.1 kilogram greater increase than the high carb group. But they also found that the keto group had a 0.7 kilogram greater fat loss than the high carb group. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're telling me that the keto group built muscle and burned fat at the same time. Okay, so let's just back up for one second and let's think about that first study that talked about a decline in performance. Hypothetically, let's say that that study is totally accurate and holds merit across the board. Unless you are really aiming for performance, personally, I wouldn't care if I had a 6% loss in mean power if it meant that I was actually going to still build more muscle and burn more fat. I could live without the 6% if I knew that I was going to be achieving those kind of cosmetic physiological results. So not saying that the first one is null and void entirely, but I'm just saying that if we're looking at this realistically, then yeah, who cares? Okay, but the question still remains, what about athletic performance? I mean, if you're an Olympic athlete or you're someone that really needs to perform, you wanna know that you're getting the best possible fuel. That's where this next study comes in that was published in the journal Metabolism. So this study took a look at 20 athletes. And the thing I really like about this study is they did it right, okay? They took 20 athletes and they had them go on either a high carb or a keto diet for 20 months, 20 months, to make sure that they truly got the full gist of whatever diet they were on. 20 months of keto is gonna get you keto adapted. This isn't four days of keto and calling it keto. So then what they did is after these 20 months, they had each respective group consume a 340 calorie shake prior to a workout. 
Now, the low carb group ended up having a 340 calorie low carb shake, and the high carb group had a 340 calorie high carb shake. Same energy, they just different macronutrients, of course. Well, guess what? At the end of the workout, they found that the keto group ended up utilizing 2.3 times more fats as a fuel source than the other group. Okay, but that doesn't really talk about performance. But what they did find was that both groups used the same amount of carbohydrates for fuel. Wait a minute. I've talked about this in another video before, but here it is in a little bit of a different context. So you're telling me that the keto group used just as many carbs as the non-keto group when exercising. So something kind of doesn't add up here. What's actually going on? Well, no, this is actually a cool thing, and this is the benefit of keto. You actually become dual-fueled. You see, even though there were not carbohydrates coming in through the diet, the keto body was able to still create glucose through different pathways for energy. So even though the keto group utilized fat as a fuel source, they also use carbs as a fuel source, which therefore goes to show that when we need that anaerobic energy from glycogen, we have it still, even when you're in keto, because the body preserves the glycogen for utilization in times like this. The other thing is that when you're on keto, you have a very cool ability to be able to take your lactate, which is literally just the exhaust from your workout, like it's the cells create lactate as a byproduct, you're able to take that and have it go through what is called lactate glyconeogenesis and create glucose, create energy. Also go through what's called the Cori cycle, which is similar to the Krebs cycle, but slightly different, and create energy again. So yeah, you have this heightened ability to create glucose from thin air when you're on keto. So of course, you can still have good performance. That's why they found that both groups had good performance. Just one group used more fat, but both groups use the same amount of carbs. But hey, to make matters even better, both groups were able to restore their glycogen the same way, even without consumption of carbohydrates in the keto group. All right, so I got one more study that I wanna throw at you. Okay, this one was also published in the Journal of Metabolism. This study is really cool because it took conditioned cyclists. It took people that were already endurance trained and very high level cyclists. And for one week, they had them do a baseline traditional diet with like traditional carbohydrates and proteins, okay? And then after that, they had them go four weeks on a ketogenic diet. Again, I really like this study because not four days, they had them go four weeks. These scientists, these researchers got the point. They said, okay, we gotta give them a baseline and then we have to have them go for four weeks so they get a full solid effect with ketosis. Okay, and then what they had them do is they had them do a spin ergometer test, so a cycling ergometer test. They had them do this at baseline and then they had them do it again after four weeks of keto. They wanted to measure their VO2 max. Well, they found that conditioned athletes had no change in VO2 max. So these cyclists had the same VO2 max when they were on ketosis than they did when they were running on carbs four weeks ago. Okay, that just goes to show that if you're a highly trained athlete, your body's gonna adapt either way. Okay, but it gets even cooler. They found that the keto diet ended up making it so that these athletes were able to increase their time to exhaustion by four minutes. So they had the same kind of output, the same VO2 max, but they could go for four minutes longer than they could when they were running on carbohydrates. They also found that keto group ended up oxidizing three times less glucose. Less glucose oxidation means less free radical damage and the body is able to recover better. The thing that I really liked about this study is that even the researchers and the scientists that were involved ended up saying, and I quote, that there were dramatic physiological adaptations that occurred. It's like they were blown away that the body was able to adapt and utilize fats so easily and efficiently. So I know this sounds like I'm just compiling a bunch of studies that are pro-keto, but quite honestly, I just wanted to debunk the fact that keto is gonna cause a decline in your performance. I've been keto and I haven't been keto before. And honestly, I've never noticed a difference in my performance. I notice when I'm keto, I have better endurance and I notice that maybe my stamina is a little bit better, but overall, my strength has never changed. I think a lot of it we put in our own heads because we're reading all the propaganda that's out there, but maybe that's just my opinion. Anyway, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, put them down in the comment section below and we'll review and create some awesome content. See you soon.